Psalm 144 of David. Praise be to the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues peoples under me. O oh Lord, what is man that you care for him, the son of man that you think of him? Man is like a breath, his days are like a fleeting shadow. Part your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Send forth lightning and scatter the enemies. Shoot your arrows and rout them. Reach down your hand from on high. Deliver me and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. I will sing a new song to you, O God. On the ten-stringed lyre, I will make music to you, to the one who gives victory to kings, who delivers his servant David from the deadly sword. Deliver me and rescue me from the hands of foreigners whose mouths are full of lies, whose right hands are deceitful. Then our sons in their youth will be like well-nurtured plants, and our daughters will be like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Our barns will be filled with every kind of provision. Our sheep will increase by thousands, by tens of thousands in our fields. Our oxen will draw heavy loads. There will be no breaching of walls, no going into captivity, no cry of distress in our streets. Blessed are the people of whom this is true. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. Psalm 145 a psalm of praise of David. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all men may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving toward all he has made. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving toward all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him, he hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Chapter 26 The Divisions of the Gatekeepers From the Korahites, Meshelamiah, son of Cori, one of the sons of Asaph. Meshelamiah had sons, Zechariah the firstborn, Jediel the second, Zebediah the third, Jathniel the fourth, Elam the fifth, Jehohanan the sixth, and Eliahoenai the seventh. Obed-Edom also had sons, Shemaiah the firstborn, Jehozabad the second, Joah the third, Sekar the fourth, Nathanael the fifth, Amiel the sixth, Issachar the seventh, and Peulathai the eighth, for God had blessed Obed-Edom. His son Shemaiah also had sons, 
who were leaders in their father's family because they were very capable men, the sons of Shemaiah, Athnai, Raphael, Obed, and Elzabad. His relatives Elihu and Semachiah were also able men. All these were descendants of Obed-Edom. They and their sons and their relatives were capable men with the strength to do the work, descendants of Obed-Edom, 62 in all. Meshelamiah had sons and relatives who were able men, 18 in all. Hosa the Merarite had sons. Shimri the first, although he was not the firstborn, his father had appointed him the first. Hilkiah the second, Tabaliah the third, and Zechariah the fourth. The sons and relatives of Hosa were 13 in all. These divisions of the gatekeepers, through their chief men, had duties for ministering in the temple of the Lord just as their relatives had. Lots were cast for each gate, according to their families, young and old alike. The lot for the east gate fell to Shelemiah. Then lots were cast for his son Zechariah, a wise counselor, and the lot for the north gate fell to him. The lot for the south gate fell to Obed-Edom, and the lot for the storehouse fell to his sons. The lots for the west gate and the Shalaketh gate on the upper road fell to Shupam, and Hosa. Guard was alongside of guard. There were six Levites a day on the east, four a day on the north, four a day on the south, and two at a time at the storehouse. As for the court to the west, there were four at the road and two at the court itself. These were the divisions of the gatekeepers, who were descendants of Korah and Merari. Their fellow Levites were in charge of the treasuries of the house of God, and the treasuries for the dedicated things. The descendants of Laden, who were Gershonites through Laden and who were heads of families belonging to Laden the Gershonite, were Jehiali, the sons of Jehiali, Zetham, and his brother Joel. They were in charge of the treasuries of the temple of the Lord. From the Amramites, the Izzarites, the Hebronites, and the Uzzielites, Shubael, a descendant of Gershom, son of Moses, was the officer in charge of the treasuries. His relatives through Eliezer, Rehabiah his son, Jeshea his son, Joram his son, Zikri his son, and Shalomoth his son. Shalomoth and his relatives were in charge of all the treasuries for the things dedicated by King David, by the heads of families who were the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, and by the other army commanders. Some of the plunder taken in battle they dedicated for the repair of the temple of the Lord, and everything dedicated by Samuel the seer, and by Saul son of Kish, Abner son of Ner, and Joab son of Zeruiah, and all the other dedicated things were in the care of Shalomoth and his relatives. From the Izharites, Cananiah and his sons were assigned duties away from the temple, as officials and judges over Israel. From the Hebronites, Hashabiah and his relatives, 1,700 able men, were responsible in Israel west of the Jordan for all the work of the Lord and for the king's service. As for the Hebronites, Jeriah was their chief according to the genealogical records of their families. In the 40th year of David's reign, a search was made in the records, and capable men among the Hebronites were found at Jazer in Gilead. Jeriah had 2,700 relatives who were able men and heads of families, and King David put them in charge of the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh for every matter pertaining to God and for the affairs of the king. Chapter 27 This is the list of the Israelites, heads of families, commanders of thousands, and commanders of hundreds, and their officers, who served the king in all that concerned the army divisions that were on duty month by month throughout the year. Each division consisted of 24,000 men. In charge of the first division for the first month was Jeshobiam, son of Zabdiel. There were 24,000 men in his division. He was a descendant of Perez and chief of all the army officers for the first month. In charge of the division for the second month was Dodai the Ahohite. Mikloth was the leader of his division. There were 24,000 men in his division. The third army commander for the third month was Benaiah, son of Jehoiada the priest. He was chief, and there were 24,000 men in his division. 
This was the Benea, who was a mighty man among the thirty, and was over the thirty. His son, Amizabad, was in charge of his division. The fourth, for the fourth month, was Asahel, the brother of Joab. His son, Zebediah, was his successor. There were 24,000 men in his division. The fifth, for the fifth month, was the commander, Shamhath, the Israelite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The sixth, for the sixth month, was Ira, the son of Ikish, the Tekohite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The seventh, for the seventh month, was Heliz, the Pelonite, an Ephraimite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The eighth, for the eighth month, was Sibekai, the Hushethite, a Zerahite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The ninth, for the ninth month, was Abiezer, the Anathathite, a Benjamite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The tenth, for the tenth month, was Meharai, the Netophathite, a Zerahite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The eleventh, for the eleventh month, was Benaiah, the Pirithonite, an Ephraimite. There were 24,000 men in his division. The twelfth, for the twelfth month, was Heldai, the Netophathite, from the family of Othniel. There were 24,000 men in his division. The officers over the tribes of Israel, over the Reubenites, Eliezer, son of Zikri, over the Simeonites, Shephatiah, son of Maacah, over Levi, Hashabiah, son of Kemuel, over Aaron, Zadok, over Judah, Elihu, a brother of David, over Issachar, Amri, son of Michael, over Zebulun, Ishmaeah, son of Obadiah, over Naphtali, Jeremoth, son of Azrael, over the Ephraimites, Hoshea, son of Azaziah, over half the tribe of Manasseh, Joel, son of Padaiah, over the half-tribe of Manasseh in Gilead, Iddo, son of Zechariah, over Benjamin, Jaasiel, son of Abner, over Dan, Azarel, son of Jeroham. These were the officers over the tribes of Israel. David did not take the number of the men twenty years old or less, because the Lord had promised to make Israel as numerous as the stars in the sky. Joab, son of Zeruiah, began to count the men, but did not finish. Wrath came on Israel on account of this numbering, and the number was not entered in the book of the annals of King David. Asmaveth, son of Adiel, was in charge of the royal storehouses. Jonathan, son of Uzziah, was in charge of the storehouses in the outlying districts, in the towns, the villages, and the watchtowers. Ezrai, son of Caleb, was in charge of the field workers who farmed the land. Shimei, the Ramathite, was in charge of the vineyards. Zabdi, the Shifmite, was in charge of the produce of the vineyards for the wine vats. Baalhanan, the Gedirite, was in charge of the olive and sycamore fig trees in the western foothills. Joash was in charge of the supplies of olive oil. Shitrai, the Sharonite, was in charge of the herds grazing in Sharon. Shaphat, son of Adlai, was in charge of the herds in the valleys. Obil, the Ishmaelite, was in charge of the camels. Jadea, the Moranothite, was in charge of the donkeys. Jaziz, the Hagrite, was in charge of the flocks. All these were the officials in charge of King David's property. Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, a man of insight, and a scribe. Jehiel, son of Hakmani, took care of the king's sons. Ahithophel was the king's counselor. Hushai, the archite, was the king's friend. Ahithophel was succeeded by Jehoiada, son of Benaiah, and by Abiathar. Joab was the commander of the royal army. Chapter 28 David summoned all the officials of Israel to assemble at Jerusalem, the officers over the tribes, the commanders of the divisions in the service of the king, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, and the officials in charge of all the property and livestock belonging to the king and his sons, together with the palace officials, the mighty men, and all the brave warriors. King David rose to his feet and said, Listen to me, my brothers and my people. I had it in my heart to build a house as a place of rest for the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. 
for the footstool of our God, and I made plans to build it. But God said to me, You are not to build a house for my name, because you are a warrior and have shed blood. Yet the Lord, the God of Israel, chose me from my whole family to be king over Israel forever. He chose Judah as leader, and from the house of Judah he chose my family, and from my father's sons he was pleased to make me king over all Israel. Of all my sons, and the Lord has given me many, he has chosen my son Solomon to sit on the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. He said to me, Solomon, your son is the one who will build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. I will establish his kingdom forever, if he is unswerving in carrying out my commands and laws, as is being done at this time. So now I charge you in the sight of all Israel and of the assembly of the Lord and in the hearing of our God. Be careful to follow all the commands of the Lord your God, that you may possess this good land and pass it on as an inheritance to your descendants forever. And you, my son Solomon, acknowledge the God of your father and serve him with wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind, for the Lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you, but if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a temple as a sanctuary. Be strong and do the work. Then David gave his son Solomon the plans for the portico of the temple, its buildings, its storerooms, its upper parts, its inner rooms, and the place of atonement. He gave him the plans of all that the Spirit had put in his mind for the courts of the temple of the Lord, and all the surrounding rooms, for the treasuries of the temple of God, and for the treasuries for the dedicated things. He gave him instructions for the divisions of the priests and Levites, and for all the work of serving in the temple of the Lord as well as for all the articles to be used in its service. He designated the weight of gold for all the gold articles to be used in various kinds of service, and the weight of silver for all the silver articles to be used in various kinds of service, the weight of gold for the gold lampstands and their lamps, with the weight for each lampstand and its lamps, and the weight of silver for each silver lampstand and its lamps, according to the use of each lampstand the weight of gold for each table for consecrated bread, the weight of silver for the silver tables, the weight of pure gold for the forks, sprinkling bowls, and pitchers, the weight of gold for each gold dish, the weight of silver for each silver dish, and the weight of the refined gold for the altar of incense. He also gave him the plan for the chariot, that is, the cherubim of gold, that spread their wings and shelter the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. All this, David said, I have in writing from the hand of the Lord upon me, and he gave me understanding in all the details of the plan. David also said to Solomon, his son, Be strong and courageous and do the work. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the temple of the Lord is finished. The divisions of the priests and Levites are ready for all the work on the temple of God, and every willing man skilled in any craft will help you in all the work. The officials and all the people will obey your every command. Chapter 29 Then King David said to the whole assembly, My son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The task is great, because this palatial structure is not for man, but for the Lord God. With all my resources, I have provided for the temple of my God, gold for the gold work, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, and wood for the wood, as well as onyx for the settings, 
turquoise, stones of various colors, and all kinds of fine stone and marble, all of these in large quantities. Besides, in my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God, over and above everything I have provided for this holy temple. Three thousand talents of gold, gold of Ophir, and seven thousand talents of refined silver for the overlaying of the walls of the buildings for the gold work and the silver work and for all the work to be done by the craftsmen. Now, who is willing to consecrate himself today to the Lord? Then the leaders of families, the officers of the tribes of Israel, the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, and the officials in charge of the king's work gave willingly. They gave toward the work on the temple of God 5,000 talents and 10,000 derricks of gold, 10,000 talents of silver, 18,000 talents of bronze, and 100,000 talents of iron. Any who had precious stones gave them to the treasury of the temple of the Lord, in the custody of Jehiel, the Gershonite. The people rejoiced at the willing response of their leaders, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. David the king also rejoiced greatly. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, O Lord, God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you and we have given you only what comes from your hand. We are aliens and strangers in your sight, as were all our forefathers. Our days on earth are like a shadow without hope. O oh Lord our God, as for all this abundance that we have provided for building you a temple for your holy name, it comes from your hand, and all of it belongs to you. I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. All these things have I given willingly and with honest intent. And now I have seen with joy how willingly your people who are here have given to you. O Lord, God of our fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, keep this desire in the hearts of your people forever and keep their hearts loyal to you. And give my son Solomon the wholehearted devotion to keep your commands, requirements, and decrees, and to do everything to build the palatial structure for which I have provided. Then David said to the whole assembly, Praise the Lord your God! So they all praised the Lord, the God of their fathers. They bowed low and fell prostrate before the Lord and the king. The next day they made sacrifices to the Lord, and presented burnt offerings to him, a thousand bulls, a thousand rams, and a thousand male lambs, together with their drink offerings and other sacrifices in abundance for all Israel. They ate and drank with great joy in the presence of the Lord that day. Then they acknowledged Solomon, son of David, as king a second time, anointing him before the Lord to be ruler and Zadok to be priest. So Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king in place of his father David. He prospered, and all Israel obeyed him. All the officers and mighty men, as well as all of King David's sons, pledged their submission to King Solomon. The Lord highly exalted Solomon in the sight of all Israel, and bestowed on him royal splendor such as no king over Israel ever had before. David, son of Jesse, was king over all Israel. He ruled over Israel forty years, seven in Hebron, and thirty-three in Jerusalem. He died at a good old age, having enjoyed long life 
wealth, and honor. His son Solomon succeeded him as king. As for the events of King David's reign, from beginning to end, they are written in the records of Samuel the seer, the records of Nathan the prophet, and the records of Gad the seer, together with the details of his reign and power, and the circumstances that surrounded him and Israel, and the kingdoms of all the other lands. Psalm 127, a song of ascents of Solomon. Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For he grants sleep to those he loves. Sons are a heritage from the Lord, children a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are sons born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies in the gate.